now that we've talked about how menopause might affect you, perhaps it's time to talk about treatment options. I think it's best we start with hormone therapy because that's something that you would have heard of but perhaps don't fully understand. We have said earlier that estrogen levels fall dramatically at menopause. It is this drop in estrogen that is causing most of your symptoms. Having a low estrogen level causes the hot flushes, night sweats, sleep disturbance, joint pain, anxiety, mood change, weight gain, bone loss, and so forth. And that's why giving back estrogen to your body, estrogen replacement therapy, is highly effective at treating these symptoms. Traditionally, estrogen therapy was in tablet form, but now it's often prescribed as a skin patch, which is changed once or twice a week, as a gel, so it's absorbed through your skin, and sometimes as a tiny pellet that's inserted under the skin. It can also be used vaginally, and that's a way of alleviating vaginal symptoms such as vaginal dryness without affecting the whole body. Most estrogen preparations contain estradiol. This is the estrogen that's primarily made by the ovaries when you're having regular ovarian cycles. When you start estrogen therapy, it's always best to start with a low dose and then, if necessary, increase it if your symptoms continue. If you've had a hysterectomy, you only need to take estrogen. But if you still have your uterus, which is most women, in addition to taking estrogen, you must also take a progestogen. Now, progestogen is a compound like progesterone that your body used to make that protects the lining of the uterus from being overstimulated by estrogen. We know from many years gone by that if estrogen is given alone to a woman with a uterus, after many years, the lining thickens and the risk of uterine cancer is increased. When you take estrogen together with progestin, this does not occur. If you've only just gone into menopause and recently had a spontaneous menstrual bleed, it's best to take estrogen continuously and progestogen for only part of the month. This means that each month you will continue to have a regular bleed, but it will be an artificial one created by the hormone therapy. After about a year, you can probably switch to taking both of the medications continuously. In this setting, you will not bleed at all. In some countries, there are preparations that are an alternative to estrogen and progestin therapy. In many countries, there's a medication called tibaloin. This is quite a unique compound. It has some weak estrogen, some weak progesterone, and some weak testosterone actions. So it's taken as a single tablet and has estrogen, progestin, and testosterone effects. Many women find this completely alleviates their symptoms, they don't bleed, and sometimes it also has the added benefit of improving sexual function. It is a highly safe and effective alternative. So why don't we put everybody on Tibolone? Well, firstly, it's not available in every country, and secondly, it's not a very strong compound, so some women find that they need to be on estrogen in order for their symptoms to go away. So, as menopause affects people differently, there are a whole range of choices in how to treat menopause. In recent years, scientists have developed compounds called selective estrogen receptor modulators, or SERMs. Now, these are quite unique compounds because what they do is act like estrogen in some tissues, for example, the bone and prevent bone loss, or the cardiovascular system, and yet block estrogen action in other tissues, like the breast or the uterus. So the clever concept then is combining estrogen with a serum as a treatment for menopause. So you get all the added benefits of estrogen, alleviation of hot flushes and night sweats, and prevention of bone loss, but 
safety in terms of the breast and uterus. This sort of combination therapy has recently become available in the United States and is likely to become available in other countries soon. There's always some debate as to who should or shouldn't take HRT. Now for most women, the benefits do outweigh the risks up until about the age of 60 or for at least 10 years after the menopause. But this always requires individual consideration. There is general agreement that if a woman goes through early menopause and experiences premature ovarian insufficiency, so menopause before the age of 40, that they should take estrogen at least up until the average age of menopause being 51. There's also complete agreement that except in exceptional circumstances, women with hormone dependent cancer should not take menopausal hormone replacement therapy. There is a great deal of discussion about the safety of hormone therapy and about alternatives. So I've asked some of my colleagues to come and talk to you about these issues.